What's happening? I'm really sorry about that. I don't know what was going on there, but um, I don't know. Wirecast was being weird. Didn't want to talk to Facebook. Next thing I know, uh, all I'm doing is getting errors. That's what I get for updating Wirecast like 20 minutes before I uh, actually go live. So I'm going to slow into this one because I know that, number one, it's, a, it's late, at least on the East Coast. So, you know, thank you for those of you that decided to join. I really appreciate it. You know, you could be probably doing a lot of other things on a Friday night. Um, but anybody that's joining me that wants to talk, that, that, that wants to stop looking for balance, that wants to take their life, their business to the next level, that is hopefully learning a little bit from my successes and my failures, um, or just enjoying growing bold, Dude, you guys are awesome. So I really appreciate you tuning in because there is definitely a lot of other things you could be doing on a Friday, and most people are. Most people are out, uh, you know, grabbing a drink. Most people are killing time. Most people are trying to forget about their week. We're on. We're all on here trying to push ourselves and learn, even though it's late on a Friday on the East Coast. Because you know what? That is unbalanced. But. That is the difference between you who are going to win, who are going to get where you want to in life, who are going to do the things that most people are never going to do that aren't even going to consider. This is the difference between you and everybody else. You're putting in the work on a Friday. You're on a live stream at 10, 15 p.m. You're willing to even wait for me to get my crap together while I break the internet um, and not in a cool way. Um, you know, you're willing to put in the work. You're doing the time. You guys are awesome. And um, this, honestly, this is what keeps me going. This is what gets me to do this on a Friday night because you know what? Talk about being unbalanced, right? Episode four is about having a family, um, you know, uh, 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 and, and the implications of that. Dude, I, I, I messed up, right? It just didn't, I just really didn't realize how much time that life was going to take from me the last week or two. And so I didn't get to announce uh, the winners from last week's 15 Minutes to Bold. And, um, you know, it got really late and it would have been really easy for me to say, hey, you know what, um, I'll just do it tomorrow again. But you know what, I made you guys a promise. I messed up last week. So this is the unbalanced part. This is taking my Friday night to sit here and talk to you guys. But you know what, this is freaking awesome. This is what gets me pumped up. This is what gets you pumped up, hopefully. This is how we're all going to take over the freaking world. I hope it's not too echoey in here. It sounds echoey to me. So can you guys hear me all right? Hopefully, um, let me know if it at least sounds reasonable. Um, oh, thanks, everybody, for joining. This is so cool. Hey, from Australia. Oh, Melissa, that's amazing. Thanks for joining from Australia. That's awesome. What time of day is it in Australia, by the way? Next level. No balance. Accelerate. Hell yeah. Saturday, oh, Saturday midday. That's awesome. Unbalanced. Bring it on. Christy, what's up? How are you? Sounds great. Okay, cool. Jared, how are you, my friend? Timmy Salamito is in the house. Oh, we got a good crew on a Friday night. This is badass. This is exciting for me. Michael, sounds great. Okay, cool. Cool. That's exciting. Uh, get that cat, dude. Get that cat, dude. There's a cat. 
you're, you're like, do you have a cat? I don't have a cat. I'm a dog. I don't know what you're talking about. Or I'm just not cool and don't understand what it means. Anyway, <laughs> how many of you watched episode four of Growing Bold? And if you did, what is either your biggest takeaway from it or what's your biggest question for me from Growing Bold uh, episode four? And while, while you think about that, while you type it up, I'm just going to, I'm going to punch into a, just a little bit of a clip here. Um, let me see, I'm going to skip ahead and I'm going to just pick a little, little random area. going to play a little bit of uh, episode four and let me know while this is playing, what is either your biggest takeaway or your biggest question from episode four or both if you got them. <laughs> Bounce. Brian Cristiano, Brian Cristiano, CEO of Bold Worldwide, top experts in the world of marketing. Here to discuss is Brian Cristiano. This is a hundred million million. Yes, absolutely. I have not been a great Boring. CEO. People have asked me like, oh, well, what's Brian going to do for paternity leave? And I'm like, I don't know. A, we haven't figured that out and B, he's going to do whatever is best for our, him and for our family. Right. Oh, you guys are so lucky that you don't have to worry about that. We're lucky? Yeah, maternity leave in our country sucks. I'm not lucky. We chose this life. That's right. And it's hard. Like, I think people, people look at the good things. People look at the trips, the vacations, the freedom mm -hmm. and don't realize how hard you work to get that. I, I hate the word balance. Balance is like you get on a seesaw and you're like, okay, let's get balanced. And you just kind of float in the middle. Dude, real life is extremes. It's a big emotion. It's big successes. It's big failures. And I think the problem is, is that most people try to go for balance. So guess what? They experience this in life. Very little fluctuation. My life is this. It's way more fun, dude. It's way more fun to go up and down on the seesaw, have extremes. It's not easy but it's more fun. Cast Why studio. can't you have it all? You can have it all. It's if just, you're willing to work hard enough for well, it. Well, that's it. But the amount of work it requires to do that is immense, and most people don't want to go through that journey. You ready? Are you ready? I'm always ready. All right, so I'm. Uh, thank you all for the great comments. Um, I'm just going to scroll up here. So, um, Glendeth, love seeing you and Allie talk about pregnancy. Thank you. Um, I'm telling you there's a cat by the bike. Dude, there is no cat in this house or by that bike. I swear to you. <laughs> um, and it was the best episode by far. Raw truth of family and business. Yeah, a lot of people don't talk about it or they try to make everything look super perfect. Um, I mean, I think we're badasses, but the reality is it's always still challenging. You know, I think that, um, that the reality is anything good is always going to have a challenge. You're not going to experience those high highs without also at some point experiencing a low low. Whether we're talking about a relationship, we're talking about business, we're talking about your career, we're talking about finance. It's just the harder you go, the bigger you go, the more that you're willing to take chance and to do the things your way, the more on the other side, right? That's that yin and yang. It's just like, that's just life in general. Um, Melissa, I work with my husband in our business, it really showed me having strength. Being on the same page is so important, super important. Not, and, and I won't even pretend that me and Allie aren't always on the same page. I think we're on the same page the vast majority of the time, which is super helpful. Um, but it's challenging, right? Because we're both super, uh, you know, type A people. We've got a million things going on. Uh, we, we try to say yes to everything. And at some point, you have to say no to a lot of things. And, and so it's just a balance between trying not to say no to each other uh, as much as other things that are less important. And so that is, uh, you know, that that is just, you know, what you have to figure out, like, what's the most important thing now? Um, Mike uh, loved it. Very relatable as a data for showed how important a uh, supportive spouse is beyond money success uh but supporting the vision first sure man it really is you got to be on the same page you got to support each other you got to support each other's dreams you got to push each other it's not always about like empathizing it's always about like remembering what the other person really wants and helping push them towards that you know and then also having empathy too um dr hazmat my boy brian i love these episodes because it shows real success isn't all about unicorn pool floats and parties it's constant work and only gets harder as you succeed. I actually know someone who's on a unicorn pool float in the Hamptons um, on Instagram last weekend. I will not say who that is, but that's hilarious. And uh, yeah, no, it's definitely not that, right? Like 
<laughs> and, and I'll be honest, I think a lot of that stuff that people see, those aren't really the hustlers. Those are, those are the people that are riding the coattails of someone else. I'm not saying this person that I'm talking about was, but just in general, right? It, it's just, uh, there's a lot of partiers out there. The, the people who are really putting in the work, really hustling, really creating something for nothing. Dude, they don't have time for swans or pools, man. Because there is no balance, right? Um, Paul, keeping it real by showing family struggles, having a child, but pers uh, persevering by working together and understanding uh, what both partners want in life, having the same goals, journey. Yeah, I don't think you have to have the same goals or journey, but I think that your goals and, 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 and their goals need to at least be aligned, at least to be in, in pushing in similar directions, because otherwise, if you're you know, for example, if 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 I was all about like, dude, I want to put myself all over the freaking internet, and and I'm gonna grow a multi hundred million dollar business, and 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 say what's on my mind, and and do whatever it takes, and and Ali was like, hey, well, I just want to read and be quiet, and I don't want anyone to know about my life at all, dude. We would have a really tough time, but like. Dude, Allie's way more popular than I am. She has way more followers. She's way cooler and way prettier than I am. Um, and she's totally willing to put herself out there. And she has been way longer than I have, right? Like, I mean, she's been writing a blog for eight years, nine years now. So um, that's a line. Like, her, her goal isn't to build a business, uh, you know, not like mine anyway. But, um, you know, we're, we're very aligned in the things that we do are very complementary. And so it works. It really works very well. Um, Jared, it seems almost counterculture from what everyone else is saying. It's uh, the antithesis of the work from the from the beach three hours a week scheme, refreshing and real. Yeah, dude, I <laughs> I probably work from the beach three hours a week. I probably go to the beach three hours a year. Um, like, and that's just the truth. And usually those three hours are split up across 12 different trips when I'm either happen to be in LA or Miami and I get in a good hotel that happens to be on a beach and I like find 20 minutes to like go outside, walk, and I'm usually still taking a business call and then maybe I'll lay out in the sun for 10 minutes. Like that's three hours a year I get on the beach. Um, yeah, there is no get rich quick scheme. There is no, uh, oh, hey, just, you know, four hour work week. I think what, you know, I'm a huge Tim Ferriss fan. Um, and I like that book actually. But the title, and Tim will admit this, is a little bit of a, a little clickbaity. Uh, the reality is it's not about working four hours a week and being super successful. It's, it's really the whole message is about, you know, how are you boiling down the most important things and just doing that with your time. Tim works 80-hour weeks. <laughs> you know, the, the, the author of the four-hour work week works 80-hour weeks. I mean, it's just you can't get to do the big things that everyone wishes they had or could do by not doing that. Like it does not happen, you know, and that's called winning the lottery, you know? And so that's it. Like it, there is no, oh, hey, just take this course and you're gonna make a lot of money, right? I think like a really good example is there's so many like, oh, digital marketing courses, how to start a digital ad agency. I get targeted all the time on Facebook just because obviously I'm an agency owner, you know, I'm like way not qualified for any of those folks, but I watch them and I read them and I look at them and you know, I see that stuff because it's, it's it's interesting to me because it's creating this saturation in the marketplace of like really low value people and companies that don't actually create anything of value and instead are just selling each other the ideas of how to build a company. But nobody's really actually done that. Um, you know, they're 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 talking about like, oh, hey, how to get to a ten thousand dollar a month client when the money that that person makes. Uh, selling that course makes all their money uh, by selling courses about how to do that. And that's where they made their $10,000 a month. And like, and who the hell wants to make $10,000 a month? I think that's like, you know, why are you, why, why, you know, why are you going to read that anyway? Like, like go, go listen, like, go read Richard Branson, go read Grant Cardone first, you know, go big, go way bigger. Um, but anyway, but that is that culture of like, oh, hey, you can just like start a digital ad agency and virtually, and you don't really need any employees and there's no startup costs. Bullshit, dude. I'm sorry. It's just not the case. Um, Jason, Brian, I almost interviewed with you a year back, wound up starting my own agency, followed my own path. Oh, hell yeah, Jason. Dude, that's freaking awesome. Congratulations. I'm glad you didn't interview with me. Not glad you didn't, but I'm glad that you went your own route, man, because that's what this is all about. Um, Anthony, great episode. Um, it's all to do with communication between each other. Dude, total communication. And I'm going to be honest, and Allie, if she's still watching this, um, will we'll admit, like, I'm kind of shitty at communicating with her, like, for sure. I'm not the best. But I'm also not the worst. <laughs> Eventually, I figure out like, oh yeah, shit, I should have called you and told you what I was doing there. Um, but yeah, but the better communication, the better it goes. Seth, love equals support. 
the drive and the dream. Dude, yeah, for sure. Like, what do you want? What is, what is your significant other want? What do the people in your life want? Like, push them towards it. Help them towards it. You know, it, 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 it is reciprocal. Caleb, hey, what's up? Uh, where do you see social media marketing in five years? Technology advancements, advancements new platforms, etc. Um, it's hard to say specifically. Definitely the five years is a long period of time in the tech world, in the social world, in the digital world. We haven't really seen like any major advances, right? Like Facebook, Instagram, crap chat, um, that will totally be out of business or acquired like way before then. But aside from that, like there'll be something new. I don't know what it is yet, right? Like does audio, does Amazon, uh, does Alexa, uh, you know, become really big? Watch this. Hey, Alexa, turn off the bedroom lights. Oh shit, wrong. I'm in the wrong room. Alexa, turn off the office lights. It's not gonna do it. Alexa, turn off the office lights. There you go. Alexa, turn on the office lights. Anyway, like does that become real? You know, like, does that become bigger than just this gimmicky thing? Damn it. Damn it, Alexa. Turn on the office lights. Oh, it's not going to fight. Come on. Oh, my God. Alexa, turn on the office lights. There you go. <laughs> this is fun. But anyway, but does it go audio? I don't know. Like, it, that's a thing. I'm testing out. I like it. It's fun. I mess around with it. Hook all my stuff up to it. Uh, but anyway, like, does it go audio? Is are we not like using phones the same way? The, like, does the Apple Watch really take off and become the new thing? I don't really know. It's going to be changed. It's going to continue to evolve. But it, but regardless of the platform, regardless of the technology, what will continue to happen is I really think that information will still it will get tinier and tinier and tinier. Right? Like everyone's headline readers. Like it's just everyone's just getting these microscopic bits of information. And so it's, 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 I think it's going to go the other, it's going to kind of go in two ways. You're going to get like really even more scattered information, um, number one. And number two, then you're going to have like really deep long form stuff. Okay, I'll give you an example. Um, the average reach for a, you know, for a video on Facebook is like two and a half percent or so, the ballpark, right? Um, the Growing Bold episodes, like, yeah, you guys know, like I put paid behind it to continue to help scale it out. But we always run 24 hours first, totally organic, to see what the organic reach is before we push any paid behind any of the episodes, right? Because I want to know really what really do people care, or is it just because we put money behind it, okay? Um, and then that determines some of our strategy. FYI, like if you do this kind of stuff, it's a good, really good strategy. See how something does organically, then decide how do you want to scale it out. Um, because why put money behind something that nobody really cares about or just doesn't care about as much um, versus, wow, people really care about this, put extra money behind it, right? Um, you're never going to hit 100% of your audience organically ever. So unless you have that like one in a million, I hate the word viral, but viral video, um, but that's like you can't plan on that. And so aside from that, you're never going to hit 100% of your audience. You're always going to have to scale with paid. Um, anyway. Uh, growing bold episodes typically get the worst performing episodes get about 15% organic reach. The best performers get about 30 to 35% organic reach. That's huge comparatively to the average video getting two and a half, a half uh, percent organic reach. And the funny part is, is that everything you read, including some of the information that Facebook themselves puts out, says, hey, shorter the better. 15 seconds, 10 second, five second video, 30 second max. But really, everybody's in this 15, 10 second video. Dude, the average growing bold video is eight and a half minutes. It's not about the length of the video. People aren't saying, I only watch 15 second videos. No, people are saying, hey, I wanna watch this information. I wanna watch, be entertained by these people. I want something that's gonna make me feel a certain way, educate me a certain way, entertain me a certain way. And then if it's good enough, I'll watch however much of it, right? And so for us, actually, like the graph curve, um, like, cause it, it drops off. If, ever, if people make it past, I think it's, I think it's about a minute and 40 seconds. The, it pretty much there's no fall off past that point. So if I get people past a minute and 40, they'll watch five minutes, they'll watch eight minutes, they'll watch 15 minutes. And so, but, but, but at the end of the day, I think that that's going to become a bit of a trend where you see these like even shorter micro, like two second little gifts, like gifts are going to be like what marketing is. And then you're going to have the other side, the paradigm shift where the people like either myself, maybe other folks, uh, other brands that go like, yeah, I'm just going to do long form. I'm going to do real long form and go total counter to that. And I think everything in the middle is going to die, at least in the next five years. And then who the hell knows after that? Five, again, I don't know what the platforms are going to do, but I, I can tell you that's the trend of these, like really short. And then the other side, depth, 
information, really interesting, very valuable stuff because everybody, most people go away from it. That was a long answer, but hopefully there was some value in there for you. Um, nice last name, Cristiano, first name, hell yeah, nice first name. Eric, how's the baby sleeping? Actually really well, she gets like five, six hours a night. I stupidly stay up after her, so then I only get like three or four, which is why I'm tired, but no, she sleeps fantastic. Um, Luann, hey, how are you? Um, most don't understand how much work it takes to get the momentum going on the seesaw. Oh, dude, it's especially when you stop the momentum. And I'll use Growing Bold as an example again, right? Like I took too long of a hiatus and I can absolutely, with unequivocally, with the data, see how much harder it is to reach the same freaking audience because Facebook's like, yeah, yeah, dude, you can't like go and disappear for four and a half months and then expect to like reach the same amount of your audience. So that's the challenge. Like if you're gonna talk, if we're talking about marketing for a second here, like dude, consistency is freaking key. And, and if we're talking about life and we're talking about business, consistency is key. Consistency is what creates momentum. And then the mentality of how you view what's happening consistently in your life creates the version of momentum because there's positive momentum and there's negative momentum. Positive momentum is when you are just doing stuff, everything, everything is going your way, more opportunities, more things, stuff's clicking, everything is happening. And then there's the other, we're like, dude, nothing's going your way. Everything is terrible. Like everything's blowing up. There's all sorts of issues. Do you know what the difference is between positive momentum and negative momentum is? Your view on what's happening to you. Let me say that again. What's the difference between positive momentum, meaning everything is just going your way, and negative momentum, where like everything coming at you and smashing in your face? The way that you view those things that are happening. Okay, so your mentality, how you are thinking about what's happening, you start to see the patterns, and then you start to react to those patterns. So, for example, as I was leaving my office today, Actually, actually, funny little story. So I brought Ellie into the office today. Um, bring your dog to her to walk, work day. Um, I made that up. And, um, and, and anyway, so she's awesome. She's cool. She's hanging out at the office. And I'm in a, I'm in a, conference, I'm in a uh, meeting in our conference room. And she's just like hanging out with us. And she just keeps going over to, we have a, a, like the, 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 the car, key carded like security door, had like super heavy security door for all of our IT, our, our, our IT, our technology room. And she like keeps going scratching at the door. And I was like, yeah, she probably just wants to know what the hell's behind the door. Blah, blah, blah. So I like, keep ignoring her. She kept going up to it. I was like, fine, I'll just open it to show you that it's just like this dark space with a bunch of loud, like, you know, tall, huge, crazy servers and a bunch of cables. So I open it, I show it to her. And there's a freaking puddle of water underneath all of our servers. I was like, what the fuck is this? Holy shit, are you kidding me? Dude, literally like 200 grand or more of freaking IT technology standing over a freaking inch and a half of water. And had my dog, had Ellie not scratched the door, dude, I would have had no reason to even open that. And I don't think anyone had any reason to open the server room for, I don't know, who knows? Turns out there was like some, some, they were doing construction on the floor above us and whatever, and there was a, ah, whatever, whatever, long story. But, <laughs> it's funny, but here's the deal, right? So I could have looked at that situation. I was freaking pissed, right? And I'm like, dude, I was like, I'm talking to Lisa, I'm talking to everybody, like, dude, call the building, we gotta get this, we gotta get this, call the call IT, like, freaking fix this. This is insane, because if this goes down, like, dude, like, you know, anyway, just, it, it's just a nightmare. And so, um, so like, this is super critical. But then once I fix it, I was like, all right, well, this is great. Uh, like, 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 this is great because we're doing more construction in the office. And I was like, we just found out that there are pipes that run over top the floor above us, above our server room. We can't, you can't freaking have an IT room anywhere near water pipes. Are you kidding me? So we're like, okay, we're going to, as part of the new construction, we need to move the IT. Like there's gotta be a whole nother solution here and we have the opportunity to do so. And so for me, I go, oh cool, that's an opportunity, shit, great. So you know what, we're gonna meet with the architects on Monday, we're gonna fix that. But dude, how many people, and even my former self would've gotten caught up in that, been so mad and oh my God, and why didn't X, Y, Z and shouldn't da, 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 da. And then I'm gonna see this other problem, this other problem, this other problem. Dude, I just took a problem and I saw an opportunity. And guess what, I guarantee you, when I'm with the architect on Monday and I'm talking to them, I'm gonna find some other opportunity. Cause they're gonna be like, I'm gonna find something where I go, oh, hey, 
actually, can we do this instead? And so I create this forward momentum because of how I'm mentally looking at all of the things that are happening around me and to me in front of me. I'm connecting the dots positively, right? It doesn't mean that everything's positive. It just goes, okay, cool. What's the opportunity out of this? What is the opportunity? And so that's that forward momentum. But if I got just got caught in the negativity, don't get me wrong, I was freaking pissed. But like, but once you're like, all right, great, I'm pissed. Like, how do we solve it? What do we learn from it? And how do we take advantage of this? Dude, it changes everything. That is the difference between forward and negative momentum. Positive and negative momentum. All right. Let's see. So these are awesome feedback questions, by the way. This is this is fire. I love this. Caleb, I'm 18, surrounded by business friends, same age as me. They're all making uh, making their uh, main money from courses on something they barely know. For me, I mastered YouTube and have been working for me for years. Now I'm actually making a course on it. Great for you, man. Congrats. Um, Eric, she tries to uh, Eric, she tries to sleep and tries to tell Brian to stop taking talking, and he just won't. That is probably freaking true. So is Ellie. Michael, uh, you keep setting off my Alexa. That's freaking hilarious. <laughs> Oh my God, that's awesome. Um, Seth, thanks for t uh, t take, uh, talking about the extremes. Damn it, Alexa. Seriously. And then set it off. All right, uh, Alexa is fired. You're fired. Um, hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Uh, how do you manage empathy with your team while also planning to grow your business and take it to the next level? Did your empathy with people change when, it, when you redirected your business? Just curious where you draw the line between growth and business and empathy. See, I was very empathetic because, and, and somebody, actually somebody I used to do business with commented in the comments, um, Justin, call him out. Anyway, he uh, commented on, on that episode and said like, oh dude, like it, good for me. Like you're, you're, he thought that I was disguising like a good opportunity by giving people a you know two months severance as well hey dude you do that and then you don't have to pay him unemployment and i was like and so he thought that i did that giving people this opportunity to say hey this is an option for you you can stay or you can go and if you go here's you know here's money and he he viewed that and i never thought that anyone would even think this but apparently you know he and a few others did because they were commenting back and forth that because i gave people a severance that basically he's like, yeah, you basically just fired people and saved money on unemployment. And I was like, dude, you don't understand how unemployment works. Unemployment is insurance. I was like, I would have spent, literally if I fired 40, 50, 60% of my staff, it would have cost me in unemployment insurance probably four or $5,000 over the course of the next year. That's it, dude, that's it, nothing. And so for me, I could have done that. That's the easy thing to do. That's easy, man. Fire a bunch of people, save a bunch of money, and then go hire a bunch of other people. Dude, that's easy. But I had empathy because I loved everybody personally. Like, it wasn't anything against those people. It was just we got to a point in time where, dude, they weren't the right fit. And so I just made it really clear of what the right fit looks like and made them internalize and say, hey, am I the right fit or do I want to be the right fit? And a good amount of people said no. And I knew that they weren't, or I wouldn't have gotten up there and did what I did and said what I said. I knew that there was a large portion of the company that wasn't a right fit. And that's cool, that's okay, because everything is stages of life, you know? Like, think about it. Think about it, ask yourself this question honestly. Like, is there something that you were like totally sure about when you were like 20 years old? And you're like, oh my God, this is for sure the way it works. And now you look back and go, oh my God, what a dummy. Because you got more information, you had a different perspective. Things change. You can't, you can't take your, your 20 year old mindset and apply it 20 years later. It won't work, okay, because you outgrow it. And so it's the same thing, people get outgrown. And, and, and I don't mean that in a negative way, it's just like, it's just you don't need the same tools, resources, people, ideas, and honestly, and I didn't say, hey, your guys have been here too long, see you later, peace, because I could have saved hundreds of thousands of dollars, like for real, like real dollars like I spent I cut a lot of freaking checks man and a lot and and, and and funny enough I couldn't imagine 12 years ago being able to cut those kind of checks right but 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 um we're not, I'm getting off on a tangent here um how, how however I did that because I was empathetic 
because I didn't want to just fire a bunch of people because I respect them all and I want to see them be successful. I really do. That's not bullshit line. Like, I'm still in touch with a lot of those people. Not all of them, but a lot of them, right? And they, some of them even come to me for advice. Um, some, you know, like a couple of them have sent me stuff for, 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 for the kid, like um, for Annie. And, and so, so like, because they get it. And, and a couple of people have messaged me like, oh my God, I got my dream job. I, would, like, I wouldn't have been in that position to get it had I still been there. So like, there's nothing, that, that is empathy. And so I'm super empathetic. Um, it's not about not having empathy. I'm super empathetic, which is how I make a lot of my decisions. Uh, Christy, if we don't live a uh, life expecting the unexpected and the reality of unbalanced, I've been married for 27 years together. Uh, I've been married for 27 years, together 29. So much of life happens uh, in all uh, uh, our years. Always been bold and balanced about caring about my family. New season, want to learn things to go to the new greater level. That's awesome, Christy, congratulations, that's fantastic. Uh, and there's no balance, just living by design, absolutely. All right, Christy, if you had to choose to social, uh, two social media platforms, what would it be? What would be the best way to use it? Uh, I think you meant two, uh, two social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, for sure, maybe LinkedIn instead of Facebook. Instagram, number one platform by far, for sure, uh, and Facebook, content, content on Instagram, on what I, exactly what I'm doing. Like just look exactly what I'm doing on Instagram, look exactly what I'm doing on Facebook, maybe a little bit more consistent and do that. I found short, uh, listen to Tim Ferriss show, that's awesome. People don't have uh, attention spans, that's not true. That's not true, dude. People don't have attention spans. I love that, I love that you say that. I'm not, I'm not like hating on you for saying that. I love it. Because that is like the freaking headline everywhere. Oh, no one has attention spans now because of phones. Are you freaking kidding me? Did you know how long people's attention spans are? Think about this. People go to freaking Netflix and binge watch like 17 seasons of shows in like one sitting. Like they don't brush their teeth for 17 days. Tell me that that's short attention spans. Dude, people's attention spans have gotten longer. They just have more choices. Think about that. William Marshall, momentum, hell yeah, my friend, good to see you on here. Dogs are badass and have amazing senses. Dude, dogs are the best. Literally, like, oh, there's nothing that makes me happier than a happy dog. Okay, there's always a message in the mess. My man, hey, my man, hey, brother, what's up, Bob? Perspective is key. Uh, nice bike, bold CEO, thank you. It's a guru, they don't make it anymore, uh, but man, it was badass. I used to race on it. I won some races on that exact bike back there. I, don't really, I need to start riding it again, man. Um, hey, Neil from Orlando just mentioned torching my podcast. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Nope. Yep. Yes, my man. Uh, if you aren't hungry for more responsibility, we'll sell for mediocre. This isn't the place for you. Quoted by truly yours. Hell yeah, Anthony. Great point on Netflix. Um, awesome. Awesome. This is just, I'm having fun here. This is really great. I hope you guys are too. So, um, 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 you know, look, I think we kind of went all over the place here, but, 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 you know, your search for balance is holding you back. And balance can come in so many forms, right? Like some people take it the very traditional way of balance, like, okay, you know, I'm gonna work for eight hours and I'm gonna go home and do this and this and this and this and this in this order because I need to do a little bit of everything. You know, I think it goes back to probably, you know, and I heard this and I had a lot of people in school, friends, family say, oh, you need to be well-rounded. What the fuck do you need to be well-rounded for? Uh, you know, you don't need to be real well-rounded. If you wanna be well-rounded, that's freaking great but you don't need to be well-rounded. You need to be excited and passionate about something and the, the fewer things, or, or at least the more things you're more passionate about, the better, you know? And so, so, so even like in high school and in middle school and all that stuff, and the, at least here in this culture, it's like, you need to be well-rounded. You should, uh, you know, you should be a part of uh, the Boy Scouts and you should also be a part of the track team and you should, uh, you know, also be a part of the math thing and you should also be a part of this other thing. And then guess what happens? Because you're balanced, because you're well-rounded, you kind of know a little bit of math. You kind of know how to tie a couple freaking knots because you went to Boy Scout camp for a little while. You, you, know, you, 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 you can kind of run track and get your ass kicked because you did it for a few seasons. Uh, you can kind of do a bunch of different stuff. Congratulations. No one's ever, like, no one's ever, <laughs> when was the last time, if you want to succeed, do something really big. When was the last time they said, oh man, you know, Steve Jobs, you know, he just wanted to do a little bit of everything 
So he started Apple. Like, no, no, no. Richard Branson just wanted to do a little bit of everything. No, they're freaking focused. No, don't get me wrong. Richard Branson does everything. But it, but it starts because he, he wants to be the best. And he goes from one thing, becomes the best, then the next thing, then the next thing. Right? That's unbalanced. Right? People look at it, oh, he does everything. No, 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 no. He does one thing, crushes it, and then goes on to another thing. You know, <laughs> like, that's it. That's totally cool. And you can do that. And that's one example of maybe he calls it balance. I don't know. Like, I don't think it's balance. That's cr- it is crazy. It's health. That's focus. It's super passion. But that is what runs the world. Those are the game changers. Okay? They're like, we have to be balanced or we have to be well-rounded turns into you're freaking mediocre at a bunch of crap. And you're not passionate about almost all of it. Because you never actually get to experience the super high highs. Okay? Like, here's an example. And, and honestly, I'm being totally transparent here. Like, this sounds, this maybe could come across as I'm like trying to pat myself on the back, but I'm not. Okay? Like, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I think probably, like, luckily I was so in shape. I'm probably not super out of shape. But, dude, I'm not in shape anymore. Like, I used to be freaking fit as hell. I used to ride that bike right there 300 miles a week. I used to train my ass off 20 hour, 22 hour training weeks, kill myself. I would ride my bike from Manhattan to Floyd Bennett Field, which was a, which was a 25 mile ride. I would race for an hour and 15 minutes and then I would ride and do a training. I would do intervals the whole way back. And it'd be a 75 mile day. And sometimes if I had a really bad day, I got my ass kicked in the race. I would do as many laps as Central Park as I could until I got too busy and then I would go home on top of it. It'd be like 100 and something mile day, right? Dude, because I was all in, I wanted to win races. Do you know, the seriously, the real reason that I am not on that bike now, that I'm not riding that all the time, that I'm not as fit, because if I go and start riding now, I'm going to be mediocre at it. I can't go and win a race. I can't go and run, hun- ride hundreds of miles or like do something that I really, really want to do. I'm going to go ride around and I'm going to enjoy it. And I'm going to feel good. And I'm probably going to be healthy because, because of it. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this is the right thing to do. But I'm telling you honestly where my mentality is and how it applies to every area of my life is, dude, I don't want to go ride, ride around my bike and be like, yeah, that was cool. That was fun. Like, I want to go do something. And it, it doesn't have to be like going and winning a bike race because that's I don't know if I'll ever get back to that level of fitness that takes years and years and years of discipline. Um, but like, I want to go do something. I want to have something from that that is beyond just what everyone else can do. Everyone else can go get a bike, go ride around for, you know, an hour, half hour and come back and, you know, and be like, yeah, that was great. I had a nice bike ride. Not a lot of people, very small percentage of people go out and, and, and move their way up to cat category three in, in the uh, USA cycling, uh, you know, series and, 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 uh, and win some bike races. Not a lot of people can do that. Not a lot of people can, you know, and so on. And so for me, I get very frustrated when I'm feeling mediocre because it's well-rounded. It's balanced. It's average. Balance, average. Balance is average. Balance is average. And so it's what are you not freaking going all in on? What are you kind of dabbling in? Because guess what? You're, you're probably not super passionate or in love with a lot of those things that you're kind of dabbling, you know? And I think that's the same way with friends, with people, with colleagues, with acquaintances. You're like, yeah, I go and hang out with this person, you know, a few times a month because we always have. But, and we talk about all the old, same old shit from college or high school. You know, but we've been doing it forever. Do you want to be spending that time with that person? Is it valuable for you? Because if you do, great, keep doing it. But if you don't, why are you doing it? We only get one shot at this. There's only one freaking life, man. Like, then it's over, it's lights out. And in my belief, dude, that's it. There's nothing after this for me. And so, why are you wasting time? Why are you wasting energy? Why? Because you don't want to make someone else feel bad? So you're going to be willing to make yourself feel bad because you, you're too afraid to let someone else down. Well, guess what? That person's not sitting at home worrying about you. <laughs> you know, you, you're, you're not going after that deal because you're too worried that, oh, well, this, this, the, you know, this customer, this client, the sale, you know, they're going to feel this way about it. I'm not ready for that. And they're going to feel that. Dude, they're not at home thinking about you. You're letting them dictate how you feel today. And that, that is a big, big problem. Because that's how you end up doing a bunch of different things that you really actually don't want to do. And the reality is a lot of people, I think, myself, former self included, you don't even realize that you're doing them for someone else's reason. Because it's just what you've done. Because you think you have to. When you can start to actually take a step back and a pause and go, do I actually want to do this? 
is this really something I'm interested in? Like, if the world ends tomorrow, if, if it's lights out for me, will I be like, wow, I'm glad I did this in my last 24 hours? If the answer is no, unless it's something you like have to do for survival, don't do it. Do the thing that you'd be really happy you did in those last 24 hours. And guys, don't get me wrong, because I know people go like, yeah, well, if, I was the, if it was that, I would just go do something really freaking stupid for my last 24 hours. I don't mean that. I mean, like, would you feel fulfilled if, some, if you were like, hey, you were like, oh, this was it. Did I do really what I wanted? I mean, just like party, did I do what I wanted? Are you doing what you want to do? Are you just doing what you're supposed to do? Or you've been told you're supposed to do? Or you've always done? And are you kind of trying to do a lot of different things because you're afraid people will look at you as a freaking psycho? Or you're crazy. Brian, you're crazy, man. Like, you should just be able to go and ride your bike and enjoy it, man. You, you don't have to just always go out and race and win stuff and be the big business guy. You know who says that? People that are average. And it's hard to say to that, you know what? I don't want to be average. That, that might be cool for you, dude, but that's not cool for me. I am crazy. I am a little psycho. I'm freaking nuts. And I love it. And I love it. And I love every minute of it. And I'm not going to give it up. And I think if anybody is still on this at 10.50 p.m. on East Coast time on a Friday, you're freaking nuts too. But there's totally something that you're holding back on or that you're doing that you always did because you think you have to. Just stop. Write it down. Figure it out. Put it on a list. Do I really want to do this? What are the things that I'm really passionate about? Freaking do that every damn day, man. Like, that is what it is about. Like, that's what I'm doing here. And because you do that, because I'm so focused, I'm going all in, like, all this shit, the $100 million company, of course it's going to freaking happen. Way bigger than that. Are we going to change an ad the entire advertising industry? Uh, yeah, of course it's going to happen because that shit happens from this level of energy, this level of focus. So whatever thing that is that you're dreaming about, your big dream, make it freaking bigger and just go in. Do it. That's how it becomes reality. Not doing all the things everyone else thinks you're supposed to do. Then it doesn't. Then you're like everybody else. But you're clearly freaking not if you're on this thing right now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump up here. Um, 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 yeah, win in all aspects. The truth makes sense. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, you know, what, 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 what Q and A? What questions do you have for me about balance? About growing bold? About episode four? About marketing? What do you got? What q and I'm going to do a little Q&A for 10 minutes or so here. Let it all out. Like, this is fun. I'm having a good time. Like, this is it, man. Like, this is fun. Like, now that I'm amped up, got over the tech, technical issues, like, this is a good time. What questions do you have? And then, by the way, by the way, a couple things here. Because I know we're getting to the end and I know it's getting long. A couple things. One, um, I'm just looking at my notes. Uh, I'm going to announce the winners from this week's 15 Minutes of Bold. And last week, because I totally messed up, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, but I'm going to announce all the winners last week and this week. Um, and a reminder for me that doesn't know, we launch Growing Bold every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern on Facebook and on YouTube. You share and comment in the first 15 minutes of us airing it, so 2 to 2.15 East, East Coast time on Thursday. You share and comment on Growing Bold. I'm going to pick, uh, you, you get a chance, I'm going to pick somebody every single week to get 30 minute call with me, coaching call, whatever you want to use that for. Um, I'm going to pick people to, to get different books. I'm going to give away swag. I'm going to do some other crazy, awesome stuff. So make sure you're doing that because it's a huge opportunity. It helps the show grow. It helps me spread the word because man, like what great conversations are this? I, I want more people in on this. I'm not selling anything. Literally, I'm not selling anything. Again, unless you own a big brand that needs a really awesome digital marketing and business solutions firm, then call, then let's talk. But I'm not selling you anything. Like, this is all free, literally. Like, and I can tell you, I put a lot of time, energy, and money, a lot, into Growing Bold. Like, I'm giving, uh, it, it's a lot. And I'm not asking for anything other than help me, help me spread the show. And when you do it, I'm still giving you some stuff for doing it. So anyway, it's a thank you. It's awesome. So I'm going to announce that in a little bit. Throw any questions you have. Q&A right now from me. Oh, and, and because I said, I said because I messed up last week and I didn't get a chance to announce the winners, I wanted to do something special. And so what I'm going to do... You know what? Let's do this right now. Let's do this right now. And actually, actually, well, I'll tell you what it is. I'm going to do a group coaching call. You can call it a mastermind, whatever the hell it is, right? I'm not selling this. What I'm saying is anyone that's on this live stream right now that wants in on that, you're in. You're in. 
just do two things, two things. Before I'll tell you, there's going to be two parts to this, right? But if you want in, literally, I'm not doing anything. I'm not. I'm never. I'm. I, I'm not saying I'm never do this again. But like, there's no plan to do this. I am only doing this because last week I messed up and I didn't do my Facebook Live and I didn't announce the winners and I messed up and so I got to make up for it. And so I'm going to make up for it by any single person who is on this Facebook Live tonight live. Like once I'm off, it's over. Okay, I'm not going to let anybody else in. I'm going to do a group coaching slash mastermind, hour, two hours, whatever it is, and everybody, every, you're all going to get in, and that's it. And, I'm, and, and that's it. I'm not, there's no like course. There's no multi mastermind again. Like that's it. It's just for anybody who's in here right now. Period. One time only. For real. Again, unless I do it again. But but I'm really I, I really have no plans of doing it anytime soon. Like this is it. So that's the thing. I'm going to do a a, a group. Um, like, you know, uh, uh, coaching slash mastermind strategy. So like, I'll, I'll find a way to get like a good Q and A out to you guys. So, Hey, like, what are your business challenges, personal challenges? Uh, like, what do you want to talk about? What do we want to cover? I'll make it as super valuable. So we'll get like real one-to-one. -one. You can ask like real questions about your business. We'll go through it and it's just going to be totally closed off just for you guys. So that's a big thank you for, um, you know, for, for joining me on a Friday uh, and for me messing up last week, um, I think it's gonna be really cool, and I think it'll also give you guys, because clearly you're freaking grinders at, uh, on Friday night, to connect with each other on an even deeper level. Like you never know. Like I've had a lot of, I've actually had probably about a dozen people who have connected through Growing Bold who end up doing business together or starting businesses. So like you never know. Like you're putting some real smart people in, and maybe I'll get a guest or somebody to join me on this uh, coaching mastermind. I guess I hate calling it mastermind because I feel like I'm selling something. I'm not. I'll call it a mastermind because unless you guys get a better word, group coaching, called group coaching. Um, I'll try to get somebody else on it to add some other value. I don't know who yet. I haven't asked anybody because literally I, just, I decided decided this 30 minutes ago before I got on this uh, uh, thing. So anyway, so that's it. So two things. One, because it's late on Friday, if there's anybody that you feel like should be in on this, dude, I'm not going to give it to anybody unless they specifically say something in the comments and I'm going to let you know what that is in a minute. Right, because you got to be in here to be a part of it. Um, but if there's anybody that you know, friend, family, colleague, whatever, that should be in on this, like you can text them, call them, share it, I'm not, you know, whatever. Tell them like, hey, jump into this feed, for real. Like, and you don't have to do this, but like, if there's somebody you're like, oh, dude, this is really beneficial for so and so, like, tell them to get in here right now. I'll stay live for a bit longer. We'll do this Q and A. Uh, and, and, and then I'll, t I'll tell you exactly what uh, put you on the list. Awesome, dude, James. Yeah, yeah, you guys will be, you guys will all be in. Um, but like, tell them, let them know uh, so that they can be a part of it too. If there's somebody you feel be valuable for, because like, swear to God, once once the live is over, like only comments that happen during live will will be, uh, you know, you guys will get in. But after after it's live, people can leave as many comments. Uh, they can put the hashtag in there as much as they want. They won't get in for real. So does anybody know? Let me know right now. I'm gonna do a quick Q and A. So whether it's about me, whether it's about balance, whether it's about episode four, whatever the hell you want to ask me, marketing, Q&A right now, um, and then I'm going to come back, and then, uh, well, I'm not come back, but then we're going to come back around to this, and I'm going to announce the winners, and then uh, I'm going to tell you guys what you should, uh, the hashtag you got to put in the comments here to do the, get in on this uh, group free group, group coaching exclusively because you guys are badasses, and I messed up last week. All right. I feel like losing my voice at all. All right, let me scroll up. Questions, questions, questions. Wasting time. It's powerful shit. That's awesome. Makes sense. Not going all in. Okay, cool. Trying to find the questions. Uh, <laughs> your man, I'm freaking nuts. Love it. When do we race again? Andrew Devlin. Oh, dude, Andrew Devlin. Andrew Devlin's the man. I don't know, man. You kick my butt right now, man. You're in way better shape. I, I got to get back on the bike, though, for real. Um, Brandon, what do you do when you get overworked, tired, short staffed? How do you keep your mind and heart clean and keep pushing through, uh, to get this to the sunny day? Dude, I'm not gonna lie, man. It's, it's tough. It is really tough sometimes. I mean, I have 95% of my days are like great and I'm real freaking great and I have tons of energy, but there are 5% where I'm like, F this dude. Like, what the hell am I doing? I don't want to get out of bed. Screw this. Screw this person. Screw this situation. I'm in. F this. F that. Like, dude, I just want to sleep in. Screw. I'm so freaking exhausted. F the world. There's about 5% of the year that I feel that way. 
Um, not necessarily in a row, but that happens for me, okay? And so it's a couple things. Number one, I always remind myself, like, well, what am I trying to do here, okay? And is what the decisions I'm about to make, does it get me closer to what I want to accomplish or does it push me farther, farther away? And you complaining, staying in bed, like going, oh, I'm tired and giving in and not having that discipline, dude, it takes you farther away. So I'm like, okay, do I really want it? Do I have a big dream, I have a big goal? Yeah, I really want it. Great, dude, then suck it up and just go do it, okay? So that's number one. Number two, I'll then, like, if I'm feeling really bad, I'll either, like, blast some, like, crazy music in my head, usually hip-hop. Uh, the other is that I'll listen to podcasts, whatever. I'll throw on some, like, Andy Frizzell. I like Andy Frizzella, and I like um, Andy Frizzell, and I like uh, Jocko Willink when I'm, like, feeling a little, I mean, I like him anyway. But when I'm just, like, yeah, I'm outside of my head, I'm not feeling super confident, I'm really pissed about something, I put those dudes on. And I'm like, oh, yeah, hell yeah. Like, I started getting it back. So I do stuff like that, man. And I always just remind myself, like, you, you just got to get over to the next day. It's like, just, just run one more mile, and then the next one will feel easier, right? It's the same thing. So just push forward. How do you overcome fear and uncertainty when launching a new product or business? Um, you got to be really confident, and you, you have to have uh, confidence in yourself and in your product, okay? Because if you're not confident in yourself, you're not confident in your product, then you're always gonna be questioning things, okay? So number one, it starts with that. Are you confident in your product and are you confident in yourself? And if the answer is yes to both of those, then great. Uh, then how do you overcome the fear of putting yourself out there? You just recognize that it's part of the process, right? That it's not something to avoid, that most people, and here's the thing, this is what's cool, this is cool, I'm gonna get something real cool in here, okay? Once you realize that most people feel the same way, but it's only the one or two percent of people that they don't feel, they don't not feel the fear. They just don't give a damn and they will push past it. And so they will get the prize. But everyone else who feels that same thing and stops because they don't like the way that it feels, don't win the prize. So remind yourself, you feel the same way that everyone feels. You feel like I feel, like Richard Branson feels, like Grant Cardone feels. Everyone feels the same way. The difference is the super successful people go, I feel this way, it doesn't matter, I will still move forward. And when you realize that, it changes everything. All right, William, an entrepreneur as well. As, uh, I'm an entrepreneur as well, but uh, style of business five, uh, five of my nine years Take four medical leave. Anyone ever ask you what drives your mind in business? How do you start? How can you continue to grow? Where are you starting? It's a lot of questions. What's your motivation to escape the rut and be successful? Dude, you gotta have big dreams, you gotta have big goals, and you got to want it way more than the thing that's holding you back. You gotta want it, dude. And if it's and if it's big enough, if it's exciting enough, if you're passionate enough about it, it will pull you towards it. Mastermind, mastermind works. Um, nice. Well, oh, when would the co uh, group coaching be? I don't know yet. I really don't. Like, I mean, seriously, guys. I literally, like, like an hour ago was like, you know, what can I really do that would be really valuable, that's cool, that's only for the people that are going to be on this live? And so I was like, oh, dude, a really good group coaching slash mastermind, whatever you want to call it, would be it. So I have nothing planned out yet. <laughs> but I'm going to pull it together. And we'll do it soon. We'll do it soon. And, uh, you know, and, and, and obviously I'm sure there's going to be some of you that just the timing doesn't work. So make sure there's a way for you to like replay it or something. We'll figure it out. I'll figure out the details, but I'll make sure that I find a really good way for you guys, only you guys that are in here to register or at least like, and then you can connect with Lisa or my team and then we'll figure out the details and we'll get it going and we'll give you at least enough of a heads up, uh, so you can kind of plan around it. Um, but it, I, I think, it, I think it's going to be really, really, really cool. All right. William Marshall, who's awesome, who's an awesome person, by the way. William, uh, you're, you're an awesome dude. Uh, I've known him for a while. Okay, I'm a perfectionist. I have a vision of how uh, Benswick would be. How? How to videos, workout plan, visual aid areas, truck, uh, track club, personal classes, from a video, photo standpoint. My question, how do you balance all of these angles? Is the business more important to grow rather than the visual aid standpoint? I am, am I wasting my time? Hope, time? Hope that makes sense. William. Great question. I'll boil it down to, to everyone else. I have a little bit more context. So what, it, what, what, what William's asking is, okay, he's going after all the content, video, imagery, uh, like all of these different elements, the how-to videos, all that shit. He's going hard after it, which is great. But is he putting too, too much emphasis on that versus the actual business? Here's what I'm going to say, okay, because... 
I actually think that a lot of the folks that do a ton of content, marketers, very big name people, they constantly say, you have to do everything, everywhere. It's bullshit, it's not. They're saying that from the tower of incredibly successful businesses, personal brands that have already established it and they have teams and people to execute. It's just like myself, right? Like, I mean, I don't have the biggest team in the world, but I have a team, okay? And now, while I'm not saying to not do all those things, you have to evaluate what has the biggest impact on your business. Is it that content or is it going out, shaking somebody's hand, going to a networking event, calling somebody up, cold calling, or hundred other things you could be doing? Does the content have a bigger impact than the other stuff you could be doing with that time? And if the answer is no, go do the other stuff. Now that doesn't mean stop all the content, it just means, okay, of all the content, what's the most important channel, one or two channels, what's the most important content that has the biggest impact of the content? Then do that and the other really most impactful stuff that grows the business. Because I will tell you from experience, people watch Growing Bold and all my content, they're like, oh, that's awesome. Growing Bold and all the content, creates a level of awareness of who I am and who Bold Worldwide is. That's it. What happens on the back end that you guys don't always really see is all the regular biz dev, the meetings, the flights, the referrals, the calls, the networking events, the speaking engagements, all that shit leads to the people in person to have a conversation about how to make them a client and how to do business with them. The content opens the door of all of that stuff of like, you think about like, you, you, you meet a client, a potential client for the first time and you know, maybe you know who they are or not, but you don't really, you have no relationship with them, okay? It takes some time and I'm a person that thinks, not thinks, I know you can close a deal and should be able to close a deal without building a relationship, like the whole rapport thing is another conversation for another day. I don't think it's as necessary as people think it is. However, people like you, trust you, believe in you, they're, and you have something of value that they need and is gonna help them in their journey of their life and their business, then they're gonna buy from you if you know how to at least close a, close a door, or close a deal, okay? But in order for them to trust you, get you, believe in you, it takes time. So guess what happens? When somebody's watched all my content, when they've gone down the rabbit hole, when they look at the videos and watch Growing Bold, and then we have a meeting, they've experienced me and they've experienced bowls for out, Bold for hours and hours and hours and hours. And so now they already know, do they like me? Do they believe in me? Do they get what the company does? Do they want to be a part of it? And then it's just like, cool, like, is your problem, can I help you fix your problem? Yes or no? It shortens the sales cycle, but all the traditional stuff still has to happen. Okay, and so it's the same thing for you. Does that create the awareness because of people who are potential customers, potential prospects, to know who you are, and they can you close the deal however you would normally close the deal? Focus on the biggest impact. It's not about content, it's about impact. All right. Um, it should be called a bold session with Brian. I like that. Okay, hey Brian, I own Frontline Auto Works in Chicago. Uh, so the question is after three years in business, we have really grown, uh, grown really just by word of mouth clients, but how do we capture more clients organically on social? Uh, Frontline Auto Works, so Chicago suburb. Hey, uh, Fernando, what, what, just give me, uh, uh, Frontline Auto Works, what's like the main thing that people use you for? Just cause I know it's such a broad category. Uh, like what's your main service? Okay, uh, what tools do you use to manage your time effectively? I have an awesome assistant. Uh, how do you overcome perfectionism? Um, something done is better than a great idea that eventually might happen. That's it. Like, dude, perfectionism doesn't exist. One of my favorite quotes is, a film is never truly finished, it's merely abandoned. Because, dude, you can work on it all day. Forever and ever and ever. And polish and polish and polish. But if nobody ever sees it, dude, no one's ever going to talk about it. So stop trying to be a perfectionist. That doesn't mean don't do amazing work. Um, music is a must. What's the biggest struggle with massive growth you've seen facing in your line of business? Talent. Because the last thing and one of the big challenges that I faced over the last probably five months, four or five months is made a couple hires who um, from the traditional agency world, and I don't mean traditional as in like all they do is traditional, I mean like a big agency and like powerhouses there come into bold and it was a terrible fit, man, because they don't, it was like such a bad culture fit. And so for me, it's like 
really balancing like finding the right people, their right culture fit, um, with being able to train them the way that we think. That's a challenge to like have massive growth and find the right people and train them quick enough. Like that's a challenge, and that's something that will always be a challenge. But that's a good challenge because it means you're doing something different, and that's what we're doing. We're doing something very, very different in the marketing and advertising world. Um, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, motivation is a waste of time. Just sugar and caffeine. Just momentary buzz. Uh, committed people do regardless how they feel. Yup, that's it, man. That's it. Yup. Uh, I agree. You just do it. Just do it. Like I love Jocko Willink's uh, thing is how do you do this when you don't want to? Uh, you do it. <laughs> um, will it be a one-on-one -on -one discussion? No, it's going to be a group coaching call. Group. So like everybody can be in the same thing. We could do Skype or something with multiple boxes, which are probably what we'll do. Uh, that's it. Thanks, brother. No problem, William. How important is social media for business? I'm a residential retailer in Arizona. Moving to commercial space soon. Dude, come on, man. Like, all the traditional crap. I actually talked to somebody uh, at a really big commercial real estate firm uh, today, and they're like, dude, we're 20 years behind, uh, you know, the like, like marketing. We're 20 years behind. We're still buying, like, you know, industry rag magazine stuff. Dude, nobody reads it. You don't read it. They don't read it. So you're wasting your time, energy, money. But dude, everybody's on social. Everybody's on LinkedIn, everybody's on Facebook, everybody's on Instagram. It's super, super important, okay? Like you just gotta get to where people are. Um, Sam, what's the best way to approach adding a new business partner and how to evaluate the business and negotiating? It really just comes down, I mean, there's, that's a super loaded question um, because it's just too many variables for me to answer. But essentially, from a top line perspective, um, you know, new business partner, like what are, what's the value that they're bringing to the company, okay? And like, what are, what is their responsibility? And then how do you value the company? You know, there's a variety of ways to do it. Like, you, you, you know, whatever industry you're in, there's definitely benchmarks of, of is it, is it top line revenue with a, with a multiplier? Is it EBITDA with a multiplier? Probably, probably EBITDA with a multiplier, but it depends if you're high growth, how early stage you are. And honestly, here's the deal, I'll tell you, because I've had offers for both. And I'm not selling. Uh, but I've had, I've have had legitimate offers and here's the deal. It's like everything else, man. It is worth whatever someone else thinks it is worth. Okay. Um, all right. Exactly. Uh, most of my content is most of estimates. People looking me up, bringing the work. Okay. How do I convince a CEO, COO of the need for digital marketing, putting dollars behind it instead of doing the same Lack of marketing focus to grow our business and brand. Three marketing companies in three years did the same thing, but they refuse to listen, yet they expect sales companies to grow, yet direct customer feedback is, I never heard of you guys. Um, so Paul, so Paul, are you saying like, how do you convince your CEO or COO? And meaning like you've brought in three different ad agencies and like the CEO, the CEO and the COO are like, no, just do the old stuff. And so it just never works. Is that what you're saying? or you have an agency that you're trying to sell to, I'm just a little confused here. If you can clarify, I'll answer that one clearly. Um, Michael, are you doing Growing Bold podcast? 100% yes. 100% yes. I don't have a date of when I'm gonna launch it yet, but yes, and it's gonna be awesome. Boldcast podcast. All right, Brandon, find the right help is important. Uh, I've not found the right help uh, person help me grow. Yep, agree. Uh, okay, Frontline Auto Works. We're a mechanic shop, vehicle maintenance and service. Um, let me just scroll back up so I want to make sure I remember your question. Okay, Chicago, word of mouth. How do we capture more clients organically? Figure out, okay, great, perfect. Figure, figure out and ask your customers, what's the word of mouth? What are they telling everybody else, right? There's got to be a common thing. If you've grown word of mouth, they're saying something or some things about you. What are, is that thing or what are those things, okay? And if you find out like, oh my gosh, they're always like, the customer service is phenomenal, you gotta go here, they're super trustworthy. If that's the thing, then now you create content, you create marketing around that because that's what people wanna hear. And you get testimonials from those customers who uh, help spread your word of mouth. That's how you grow it. All right, um, scroll back down here. All right, huge fans from Arizona, what's up James? I have a mining company uh, that has developed a national distribution platform for big box supply chains via railroad. Oh, that's awesome. We have launched our prototype. We are experiencing immediate success. Marketing plan has been our foundation, absolutely sim uh, similar to your core. Love it, James. Dude, congratulations. That's fantastic. That's a wild industry to be in. Um, what do you recommend for video equipment on a budget? Um, 
There's so many different things. Here, I'll tell you, like straight up, the, the best thing is whatever camera you have on you, okay? So if it's an iPhone, freaking cracked mine, by the way, that sucks. Um, and I've never cracked the back of my phone until the other day. And I, yeah, and I had a case on it and I dropped it and it still broke. But anyway, what, you know, honestly, you could film stuff on an iPhone today. It shoots 4K. It looks good. I mean, we even include some, some iPhone stuff in Growing Bold. Um, you know, so it just really depends. But like, you go that route. There's, um, uh, what's the camera that uh, I've got? A, this is my personal one. Um, I wouldn't suggest buying this one on a budget, but the uh, 5D Mark IV, freaking love it. Uh, love this lens, badass. Um, anyway, but <laughs> uh, Gassar, my cinematographer, I think it's the Sony A7S, and then there's a model below that. I, I, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I think he, he would probably suggest that because I know people have asked him that question before. Okay, all right, let's get to it. Let's get to it. I know you guys have been waiting for a long time. Um, I'm going to announce, uh, you know, I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to announce the winners from the 15 minutes to bold uh, from last week and from this week. I'm just going to lump you guys all together. Really excited about that. And remember, share and comment on the Growing Bold episodes in the first 15 minutes they launch, Thursdays at 2 p.m., and you're automatically in it to win it. Um, and, oh, and I always forget to mention this. By the way, remember, guys, when we get towards the end of the year and we get towards the end of season two, before we launch the last episode, I'm going to pick somebody who's been doing this the whole time, who, you know, who, who really, really was going after it. I'm going to fly them out to New York City, spend an entire day at Bold Headquarters with me, uh, we'll talk shop, we'll talk business, whatever. We'll hang out, we'll get lunch, we'll get a beer, whatever you want to do. Um, so remember, I'm flying somebody out to New York City uh, towards the end of this uh, this Growing Bold Season 2 um, by doing this. So it's not just the, this stuff, the, the calls of me and the, and, the, and the swag. Dude, you can get flown out to New York, which is pretty badass. Okay, so I'm going to announce those. And then I'm also, so here's how everybody that wants to get into this group, bold group coaching call, which is totally exclusive. If you were watching this video after the live, I'm sorry, it's too late. You're out. Don't even ask me. Don't DM me. You're not getting in. Okay? Seriously. So it's only for the people that are in here live right now before I, before I end this live feed. Just hashtag uh, be bold. That's it. Just hashtag be bold in the comments. You will get in. I or someone on my team will DM you, and uh, you know, and, and we'll get you the information once we have exactly what it's going to be. But hashtag be bold in the comments um, if you want in on this bold group coaching mastermind call. It's going to be awesome, and I'm going to make it really worth your while. And again, I'll at least get somebody else to jump in, give some context. We will work through some really awesome entrepreneurial business mindset marketing stuff and we'll get real in the weeds like this will be deep awesome stuff like, I, I don't I've never done one I don't plan to ever do one again so this is only exclusive for you that are in here right now hashtag be bold uh, so I appreciate it I will make sure to get uh, get you guys and if there's anybody else again like once I shut this off this live I'm not letting anybody else in so if there's anybody that you feel like should be a part of this Text them now, wake them up, go kick them, whatever they got to do, and they can hashtag be bold and they'll get in too. Make sure, um, and, and, and actually, you know, I'm going to also add to this, be hashtag be bold, also DM me, because sometimes it's hard for, sometimes, like, if, depending on the, like, the, uh, how your account, the privacy of your account, sometimes it's weird. Facebook's been, like, a little wacky lately, and it's sometimes I can't DM people unless they DM me first. So hashtag be bold in the comments, and you are in. And then DM me, message me on Facebook uh, when we're when we're done here, just so that way I can we get the conversations open and and whatever. But I'm gonna take the list out of here before uh, before the end of the live. Okay, so hashtag be bold uh, coaching mentoring slash uh, mastermind. If you want want in on that, hashtag be bold and then DM me on Facebook. We will set it up. It's gonna be badass, um, and I'm looking forward to it. And there seems to be a lot of you jumping on. This is gonna be fun. Um, okay. So getting to it, the winners from the 15, hashtag 15 minutes to bold from last week and this week. Uh, the swag winners, uh, Jacob Eck, E-C-K. I will type all this out here in the comments. So if anybody wasn't, isn't watching live, you are going to win some swag. Aaron Griffin also winning some bold swag. Um, gosh, I'm going to mess up your name, dude, and I'm really sorry. Uh, Piyush Singh, P-I-Y-U-S-H, 
first name, last name, S-I-N-G-H. I totally probably messed up your name, and I'm sorry. You win some bold swag. Uh, and then also Jonathan Bruton also won some bold swag. Oh, oh, before I tell who won the 30-minute calls, check this out. I forgot. I'm giving away three copies. Damn it. I meant to bring it in here with me. That's all right. I was going to hold it up. doesn't matter. You guys know what it is. Of Be Obsessed or Be Average from Grant Cardone. Again, Grant and his team have been freaking awesome. Good friends of mine. And, uh, dude, I actually think I like Be Obsessed or Be Average more than I like the 10X rule. I've read all his stuff. He's a, he's a really good dude. He's crazy. He's awesome. I have one of my favorite books. So I'm going to also give this away right now. The first three people to say hashtag Be Obsessed or Be Average and then – or be bold <laughs> and be bold, whatever. Hashtag boba, be obsessed or be average. First three people, dude, I will also send you a copy from Grant Cardone, be obsessed or be average. Uh, hashtag B-O-B-A, be obsessed or be average. I'll send you a copy. First three people, I'll send you a book. Uh, Raul got one and then uh, two other people. Okay. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then anyway, and again, remember, hashtag be bold gets you into the mastermind slash bold group coaching also dm me make sure you dm me uh so that way we can uh, get you the info all right that said it's getting late we're getting them to the midnight hour here uh 30 minute call two folks um i think one of you actually already won some swag which is cool but your name came up when we mixed it all up of the uh the top sharers and commenters of one, i don't know if it was this week or last week i'm sorry i didn't break it out it's just one and two uh number one fred ward Dude, 30-minute call, my man. Uh, I've met, met, uh, met Fred, actually, at 10X. Uh, really, really good dude. He's starting, like, podcasts and stuff. I know he does a bunch of stuff with the Hank Norman. Uh, one of the nicest humans on the planet, Fred Ward. Um, I'm going to give you 30 minutes uh, coaching call with me or whatever we want to do. We just, like, shoot the shit or, like, we can work through whatever you want. Business, marketing, just hang out, 30 minutes. And then uh, Mike. Mike, my boy Mike, dude, you came up. You were the one who won some swag. And now, dude, I've been on your podcast, and you can hang out for another 30 minutes. So, And, and we can do whatever you want, man. We, we'll coordinate it. Uh, you're an awesome dude anyway, and you're like active all over the place. So I'm really glad that your name came up into that. Um, Mike Ficarra, you, uh, we're, we'll set up that 30 minutes too. And uh, I don't know. What, you, you, should, you, you can shoot me some ideas, man. We can get creative with how we use that 30 minutes. I don't know. I'm sure we could like come up with something really cool to do with it. But however you want to utilize it, man, it's your 30. Uh, so I thank everybody. Yeah, thank you, man. Uh, Jake Mahani. So anybody, last chance here before I tune out, um, hashtag be bold and then shoot me a DM and uh, you'll get into the one time only coaching, group coaching slash mastermind slash bold business session, whatever we want to call it. Dance off, dude. I'm in. I'm in, bro. Hashtag be bold. Thanks, guys. Um, <laughs> hashtag be bold and DM me and you're in. And literally, it's only because... Uh, I'm only doing it once, and it's only because I messed up uh, last week. My fault. Uh, you guys are funny. This is awesome. Well, listen, I really appreciate it. And you guys clearly are not focused on balance. You're, you are focused on yeah, living the best version and life of yourself. And guess what else I'm going to do here? Check this out. One last thing. One last thing. I can't, I can't, like, dude, I'm feeling so good here. Let's see. Let's see. Um, I'm, I'm, hang on. I just gotta. I just got to pull up this clip. I am going to give you, I'm going to give you like a, a, a handful of second sneak peek into next week's episode. This is unedited, uncolored. This is literally like I just scrolled into, I'm probably going to upcut in the middle of nowhere. Okay. Uh, quick little, little micro taste of what next Thursday's episode is going to be. Check it out. There's two things that really move us. That's why I do it when I speak. One is our childhood. Everybody gets emotional about some level about their childhood, if you think about it, right? And the other one is death. These are the two extremes of life, right? Yeah. Everybody kind of intuitively knows at the end of my life, yes. I'm going to look back at that journey and what I could have done or could have mm. seen or could have been. So I just like bring it to me every day. Mm. Why suppress it? Why hide it? Why bury it? Just because I'm not there now? No. I bring it every day right here facing that mm. dude, right? And it, it's the most inspiring state is to chase the end of your life. Mm -hmm. I also think that too, the more and more in the modern world, it's like, 
you can't really compartmentalize success like mm. people used to. Yeah. It's like you're either great or you're not. Like mm. more and more business people should be super fit, right? It's a reflection of your discipline. It's a reflection of your drive. It's a reflection of your excellence. It's a reflection of how you treat yourself. Mm. Oh, yeah, my boy, Ed. Dude, next week, it's going to be, there's going to be some powerful stuff. Literally, like I watched the rough cut, man, and I forgot. Like our combo is so deep. Like that that was deep, dude. You've seen nothing. That was like the weak part of the edit that's probably gonna end up on the editing room floor. I swear to you. I swear to you. This is gonna be the best damn like like deep stuff. Like like you wanna talk deep? This is gonna change lives. Like Ed, dude, I mean he changed lives. Him and I got into some 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 like really, really heart to heart combos. Stuff I haven't really talked about. I haven't really heard him talk. Dude, we, it's fire, dude. Honestly, like that's why I give you a, a little te teaser, a little taste, because it's on another level. Anyway, yeah, man, it's going to be badass. So I appreciate you guys. I thank you so, so much. This was freaking awesome. Um, it, w what a great way to end out, a, end out a Friday, end out the week. Unbalanced, getting after it going after what you love, what you want to do, being bold. I appreciate every single one of you. And remember, like, just keep putting in the work. Do it. And do it for you. Don't do what others uh, tell you you're supposed to do. Or don't do what you think is, you know, is the thing that everyone else wants you to do, man. Go after yours. Be unbalanced. Be ridiculous. Be bold and just get it. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. And uh, I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm.